everyone. This is George Kroos with the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And actually, we're recording this video. Uh, Katie and I, she's actually the first time, this is the first time I've used Zoom for a podcast. And so Katie and I were kind of uh, trying to figure stuff out ahead of time. But we're figuring that, you know, both of us are probably spending a lot more time at home right now. And uh, I know people are looking for content. So we wanted to record some of these videos but also share more of the podcast. So I am really blessed to have Katie Martin join me today. And Katie is a very good friend of mine. I've known her forever. And uh, she's helped me with several of uh, book studies with the Innovators Mindset. She wrote Learner-Centered Innovation uh, with Impress, an uh, amazing book. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But we just decided we'd talk about a few things and just kind of share and hopefully give some people just some things to think about. So Katie, welcome. Thank you for uh, being here today. Thank you. Super excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, whatever. She's not excited at all, to be honest with you, because we talk to each other all the time. But um, mm -hmm. Katie, uh, first of all, before we even get into education stuff, I actually going to start with a little personal stuff. And yeah. I just want to see like a lot of things going on in the world right now. How, like, how are you doing? Like, how, how are things going? Uh it's, it's kind of a world, weird world right now, for sure. Um, but I have to say, I'm feeling very grateful and blessed right now. My family is healthy, home, and uh, we're in a good place. But I feel really anxious um, about where a lot of people are and just I'm missing the connection, for sure. Yeah, and I think this is something I've been thinking about quite a bit. And uh, Patrick Larkin shared a blog post that I thought was interesting. And he, he shared it and it really helped shift my perspective because this is like, I, I'm quite an introverted person. I like staying at home, but I feel like I'm being forced and I don't like that part of it right now, which is kind of weird. But he shared uh, this post talking about gratitude and why it's important. And he said, like, what are you grateful for now that basically has been thrust upon you, right? Like that now that these, a lot of conditions have changed, like, what are you grateful for? And for me, like, this is, a, this is the most time I've spent at home probably in five years. And I'm getting time with my family and getting so much time with my daughter. And I think it's good. And I think part of it, too, I was really thinking about this. It kind of seems selfish because there's so much bad stuff going on. You know, people are struggling, and I understand that. But I think part, part of the practice of, you know, practicing gratitude is to maybe not so get so focused on yourself on the stuff that's going bad, but appreciate what you have. And then it helps you to help others. That's kind yeah. of how I've been looking at it. Yeah. I mean, I, I just actually made a list and sent it to my husband yesterday of all the things I'm grateful for, because there is a lot that can be overwhelming, but um, like you, I'm home. I, I was supposed to be traveling a lot in the next couple months and everything is canceled. And so it's an opportunity to be with my family and connect I've been able to exercise because I have a routine schedule. I've been able to see my family much more and connect. Um, and, you know, we were laughing, my husband's home, he's a teacher. And I was saying, it's really like, we're learning how to not only co-parent, but co-teach and trying to figure out how we want to both connect and um, what we want, how we want to structure things for our kids during um, their homeschool learning. Well, actually, talking about that, Katie, you just kind of wrote a blog post, and we were talking before. It's actually just recently, and I know that it's, a lot of people have seen it, and a lot of people it's helped them. Can you talk a little bit about that that blog post and and some of the takeaways from it? Yeah, so I just wrote a post on um, on Sunday as I was trying to think about, oh my gosh, my kids are going to be home from school. How do I want to set this up? And I started thinking about how I wanted to set up the day and what mattered to me as we did homeschool. And one of the big things was um, I didn't want to recreate school at home. I wanted to take this opportunity to think about what are the things the most, that are most important and how can we um, leverage this opportunity to do some meaningful work and to, to really think about how to build on who my kids are, but also push them to do things differently. So um, I shared some things in the post really around, I wanted them to set goals. I wanted them to focus on how they were gonna manage their time. Um, and one of the big, big pieces that was absolutely critical is that we had to co-create the schedule. I knew that if I came in and said, okay guys, here's the schedule we're gonna have, even if I told my husband like it wouldn't work. So we sat down and we really just said, what are the things we want to accomplish? We have all this time now, we know that we have to do some math, we have to be reading, we have to write. But what are the things we also want to accomplish in projects? Um, 
And so we started listing all those things and sorting it out. And my daughter said, you know, I think we need to have a, more, uh, a class meeting or we, you know, we, do it, we need to have a daily meeting to figure out how we did, prioritize, um, and that's been really helpful. Um, but I think the, the other big point is really making sure that we are building connecting, like we're connecting with each other and others during this time and that we're making the most of the time that we have um, that we had that we have at home so that the kids can really start reading writing and practicing things that matter to them not just doing a bunch of worksheets that are sent home from school digitally right right and you said something um you actually before we started talking or recording this you were sharing about the the school versus learning image that um i have in innovators mindset and can you talk a little bit about what you shared with me before? Yeah. So I was telling George that, um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about the school versus learning image. And we have so many traditions that we are just set on in school that um, are much more standardized and much more about um, compliance. And this is really an opportunity to focus on learning. And so that's kind of how I've been approaching this is how do we take what we know about learning, things that are personal, things that ha people have goals, um, opportunities to do things that matter. How do we make this time at home, this unprecedented time, how do we take the learning column and make that happen at home instead of trying to recreate the structures um, that we've created at school and make those things that we force upon kids and parents and educators at home? Yeah, and I, I think for me, you know, a lot of people are talking about online and I think one of the themes I'm seeing over and over again from educators, I think it's really important is that you cannot recreate the what you're doing at school in a digital format, you know, in online learning. And there's something to be honest with you that's actually good that it's being pushed, right? Because I think if, if we're going to be really effective in doing this, I think we have to focus less on our teaching and more on our learning or more on our students learning and how they're connecting, how they're sharing their ideas, how they're creating through this, this time. And I think that's something for me is really important is that are you actually just getting kids to go through a bunch of content all day and then you're fighting with much more engaging content on TikTok, YouTube, et cetera, or are you actually getting kids creating something to share their, their learning, share their knowledge. And I think, that actually, you know, kind of thinking about like Bloom's taxonomy in that process, right? Like where are we on that level and are we just getting kids to, to try to listen to us? I've seen so many TikTok videos of kids actually joking around about teachers, you know, trying to just share, you know, push content and trying to get their attention. And is that the way we want to try to do this? And I think what is happening and we were kind of, you were talking about this before as well. There's going to be a shift, hopefully, when we come back. People are seeing, you know, the importance of how we use, not using technology, but how we use technology in a meaningful way. Right. right? And so well, like, I think we say, this, we say this all the time, whether you're in school or at home, that if you just take digital work or take worksheets and make them digital, that is not this ideal 21st right. century education, right. right? It is still meaningless to kids in a lot of ways. They click through just because there's technology doesn't make it relevant or authentic. And so now we're seeing a lot of people trying to play catch up and say, oh, we have technology. Let's just send all this work home digitally, where there's a lot of educators who are, are instead thinking about, you know, what's the most important right now is connecting with my kids. Absolutely. The most important thing and the best way I've seen technology used is a Zoom conference with kids to do a morning meeting and check in, to have people share ideas to have post things that they can, you know, on TikTok or whatever else that's an, to an authentic audience, where I see um, Jennifer Gardner and celebrities starting to say, share all of your um, performances with me so right. I can be your audience. And those are things that we, we hide our kids from in school so often because we're afraid of the world. And now those are the things that are actually connecting us in a time where we're so isolated. Yeah, I think I think you kind of touched on it. Relationships are something both of us have focused on forever. And they are actually, if anything, more important right now, but harder to connect, but you still got to do it, right? Like that's still a very important aspect. And if we're just focusing on the content and, you know, I, I, I always think about 
I had so much anxiety about like the world ending when I was a kid. And then something like this happens. And I'm grateful that my daughter doesn't know what's going on. Like, like she's three years old and she doesn't have any clue, uh, you know, kind of what is happening in our world. But I think, you know, a lot of kids do. And a lot of kids are much better versed on world issues than I ever was because they have access. And how are we making sure that they're okay before we're focused? Because I'm not going to be able to concentrate if I think, you know, something really horrible is going to happen. Right. Well, I think, so yeah, definitely relationships, definitely connecting and making sure that, um, that people are, are in a place where they can learn, right? That's like, again, you know, blooms, we have to make sure that we're, that we're taking care of who we are and that we're centered before we can even focus on learning. And I think a lot of people in this moment in time are realizing that. And Mm -hmm. you see educators, um, who have transformed things overnight to provide lunches for kids, to provide connection and all of those things in a world where this is typically where we're focused on standardized testing yep. and we're focused on everyone coming to school, sitting down, doing the test. We have shifted that paradigm completely right now. And I hope that we understand as a country and a world what's possible. And I was telling you before, my, my hope is that we use this time change is an opportunity to do something amazing, right? Uh, that we use this time very to think smart about quote. what? It very is a very smart, smart quote. quote. Some, some guy said a long time ago. <laughs> um, but if, if we think about, instead of the test, we're not going to have the test data. We're not going to have this month that we used to devote to testing. So in a way, kids aren't losing a ton. They're just not taking tests. And think about how else could we show what we're learning in authentic ways? We were talking about portfolios. We're talking about goal setting. We're t- talking about you know sharing things with an authentic audience. How can we leverage those opportunities? And also for all of those kids who are thinking about getting into college and GPAs and stressing about that, we are not going to have that measure like we used to in previous years. And how do we use that as a lever also to shift how we show how kids are ready and, and capable of going to different colleges and how colleges choose kids, frankly? Right. So, so all of this being said, um, I do want to talk about briefly, Katie wrote Learners of Innovation with uh, Impress. And just, can you just tell us a little bit about your book and kind of connect it to some of the things that you're talking about right now? Yeah. Um, you know, the, so the book is, came out two years ago. And as I was writing it, um, my goal um, as a mom and as an educator was to really think about what what is possible? What could we create in school if we really empowered learners, if we help them build on their passions and their own curiosities, how we can create um, a school environment, classrooms and in districts to really unleash that potential in all kids. Um, I go back to a student said to me recently, um, can we just stop focusing on if I'm smart and start thinking about and recognizing how I'm smart Mm -hmm. Um, and that, that is profound from a student, but essentially what I was trying to get at in the book is that there's genius in all of us. And if we really build on strengths and create opportunities for kids to learn in meaningful ways, it is really amazing to see what's possible and what people are capable of. And so the book is full of stories from (laughs) teachers, leaders, my own family and kids about where that's happening. And my hope is to continue to shine a light on that and, and continue to grow those opportunities so all kids have the opportunities to learn in meaningful ways. So I think one of the things that's connected to my work, Innovator's Mindset, and, and your book and is that we both provide some examples, things that people have done, but it's really more about you need to figure this out. Like, cause I, I can't identify the strengths of your kids cause I don't work with them every single day. So, and a lot of times we're, we will, we'll walk in and say, Hey, you know, like I have this kid and this thing and this, like, how do I fix that? And I'm like, well, first of all, I don't know your kid. I don't know the student. So I gotta, I gotta know this thing. So like, how, how do we kind of start shifting that where we really start? Cause like a lot of times when we t- go to education conferences, people see the value as like, Ooh, I could do this stuff Monday. And we can implement ideas right away. And for me, it's kind of like, well, I actually want that shift where I'm figuring stuff out myself, where it's not just 
like what happens the next Monday? Do I have to go to a conference every Sunday to get the Monday stuff? Do you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. how do we kind of help people find their own solutions to some of the problems that are unique to every community? Sure. I think there's a balance, right? There's a lot of frameworks. There's no shortage of frameworks and resources yeah. and, and acronyms, right? Curriculum, like they're there. But if we aren't really clear on who we are and what we're trying to accomplish, all of those things just keep getting layered on. Um, and so I think, George, between both of us, it isn't just to take this framework and we're going to tell you it's going to fix everything. And I don't think any of us have ever, no. either of us have pretended to do that. So sometimes it's harder. It takes work. But it is, can be as simple as go talk to a kid and connect with them. Go talk to your colleague next door and share an idea instead of just, you know, sitting in your own classroom. So there's simple things like that. But it is really about what are, what are you trying to accomplish? What do you know? Like, trust your gut. Educators day in and day out are innovating in ways that they don't even recognize. Right. Absolutely. And so, so much of it that I've really, um, even since I wrote the book, been really trying to grow more is like, how do we focus on what's already going well and build from there rather mm -hmm. than than assuming that you're not doing something good enough and you have to fix everything is really trying to shine a light on the bright spots and grow them exponentially. Um, it, it's really one powerful for individuals, but also it's, it's building on things that are working in individual contexts. Yeah. I think, you know, right now it's kind of talking about that in those concepts that you talk about in the book. So if my strength is building relationships, that actually is still important when you're doing this in an online environment, when you're trying to connect with kids, you know, doing something that maybe is uncomfortable for the learning portion, but you still need to start with that strength. Because I know that a lot of teachers that may be uncomfortable with all some of this online stuff, they're really focusing on connecting with their kids and their kids love them. And they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll work with you. Do you know what I mean? I think that's, I think that's really powerful to see right now that we're, a lot of people are focusing on what that's as you go through this, as you go through this change that's happening right now, I think it is really important as Katie said, to focus on what you're really good at and start from there as opposed to, well, I don't know how to do this, this, and this, right? That those things will come right? But focus on those strengths that you already have. And how do you bring that to, to the table to your kids every day? Well, and even when you're at home, as you know, parents are going, Oh, my gosh, I don't know how to teach kids x, y, and z. And, you know, in the the um, just like, first instinct for a lot of people is to go and set up math, reading, social studies, science, and like, in these like discrete blocks, like we do it in school, instead of saying, gosh, let's just go do a project and see what we're learning and talk through things and, and actually um, do something that's meaningful and authentic. And then the teachers coaching and supporting and giving resources rather than trying to figure out how to recreate their whole day and send it home. Um, totally. And I think those, those little things, if we lean into this opportunity, that's where we'll see the innovation is what are the things we really care about Rather than yep. turning in 50 sheets of paper, we'll realize that actually doesn't matter as much as we've pretended it does. Instead, it's like, what are you doing? How are you feeling? And what are we accomplishing over the course of a week? And what are the important things to really look at rather than just doing a bunch of work? And I think that right now, um, because, you know, when you, have ki when you have kids going home for summer holidays, that's a totally different thing when you have kids going home and they're not going to school and you at home have to kind of replace that. You have to become the teacher. So I think one of the opportunities right now is we have to, like, I think a lot of people at home are realizing how valuable teachers are and how hard their job is. But I think the other thing, and I just kind of listening to you, is, is I think people are starting to realize what actually really matters. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's not just about how valuable teachers are, but all of these things that were, you know, supposedly important, all these standardized tests, scores, blah, blah, blah. I, I think a lot of parents are realizing how, how teachers are way more than that. And we're actually doing things to take away from the important and valuable things. hundred percent. And I think that let's amplify that message so that when we go back to schools mm -hmm. and we have opportunities to design our days, our years, our months, we, we pay attention to that. Um, and I think the other thing is you pushed me on this a lot is the teacher doesn't have to be the one who has all the information, right? And now we're also seeing that when you see the amount of resources that are being shared, how celebrities, 
people who all over the place who are experts are offering right. their talents right now so that the parent doesn't have to be the sole person of the information. If I don't remember how to teach this math concept, I can ask someone else to help. And I hope teachers are really understanding that and don't feel that pressure when they come back to the classroom that they have to know it all because all of us you know, in, are coming together in a community now to share our best selves and to help all kids learn what they need. I, and I think really what's important is it, building what you're saying is creating that space where kids can learn from other people outside. But we also have to make sure that we actually have kids that can learn from other kids and we can totally. create networks and what was once seen as cheating might now be seen as collaboration and how important and valuable that is. Right? You know, what, one of the things that I have, when I said I was focusing on my gratitude, um, my kids are awesome. And I, it's been really fun to just see them really flourish in this, this time, but they're nine and 10, nine and 11. And they're both there in fourth and fifth grade. So they are like co teaching each other. They're, they, you know, they're like working on math and they're supporting each other and they are very different kids and they have different strengths. And so they're upstairs in their learning environment that they've created and they're helping each other. And it's been really fun to see them, their connection grow, but also how they can, they can work together with one another. And I think we don't do that enough in school and trust our kids to teach each other. Okay. So this is the last question. Okay. And uh, I'm sure you kind of covered this in some way, I'm assuming, but just really brief. What is like some of the best advice you can give people right now? Just really short and sweet. What's the best advice you'd give to educators right now? Oh gosh, I should have a really great one. Um, the best advice, I, I think I said it already. Let's not try and recreate school at home. Let's really take this opportunity to focus on authentic learning and the opportunities we have to learn in community um, in ways that are most meaningful and valuable to ourselves and the world. Awesome. Well, Katie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for uh, impromptu, like I asked you yesterday, and we'll see where this goes. Yeah. But I really appreciate you. I appreciate all the work. Make sure you check out Katie Martin's blog. Um, that last post uh, is going to really help a lot of educators, but also check out Learner Center Innovation. Uh, it will really push your thinking. And I think it's so um, important right now, especially. I think it's this book is becoming more and more relevant as we go. So Katie, thank you. Thanks for taking the time to listen. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.